However, she didn't. You are interesting. She then released me and stared at me, watching as I stared back at her with a red face. Did I like her? I shook my head. No way. That was impossible. We were just in a business deal, nothing more. Is there anything else you wanted I to know? I stared at her as I thought. Was there anything else I wanted to know? My memories were forfeit in the end, so everything was up for grabs. Yet, I couldn't think of a single question to ask. Was that all I wanted to know? No, there was nothing else I needed to know. I felt satisfied. No, that should be all. I understand. Diana stood and adjusted the bottom of her dress before smiling at me. I barely noticed how much time had passed between us. It felt like forever, yet I enjoyed learning more. I felt bad that I had to lose my memories. However, that was the deal, and according to Diana, demons never go back on their word. Well, if you don't mind, there's one place I need to visit, and I'd rather visit it now than after I take your memories. I'll be gone from the area for quite a while, anyway. Oh? Huh? Where do you need to go? A cemetery. There's something I need to do there. It's boring, sadly, but I need to do it. You need to come with so I can watch you. Oh, boy. Well, there's only one cemetery in- only one cemetery in this house! In this house? Okay. Oh, boy. Wait! <laughs> I meant to say in this town! <laughs> only one cemetery in all of Chicago. <laughs> Look, it's, we've only been to one cemetery. It's clear only one exists. <laughs> Why does she need to go to the cemetery? Does she have a human friend she needed to say goodbye to? Does she have to meet with another demon? Sure, let me... No need to get dressed up. It's just a brief visit. Diana snapped her fingers, and the world melted into black. I stood and walked to beside Diana, unsure of what was happening. Why wasn't the world spinning instead? Was the spinning she did a trick? I felt myself click my teeth in irritation of that thought. Soon the world grew back its color, and we were standing in a field I somehow recognized. I looked down and regretted it. Oh boy. My fly was undone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry, Grandpa! I'm so sorry! At our feet was Grandfather's gravestone. It was untouched and as clean as when I last remembered seeing it. Why were we here? Up, up. Here we are. Here? I stared at Diana as she muttered a small incantation under her breath. In her hands formed a small vase with purple lilacs. She gently knelt down and placed them beside the grave. I had to pay my respects to this man. Why? Were you a friend of his? I needed to know. My mind began screaming. Something wasn't right. Why did she know him? How did she know he was dead? What was... No, I wasn't Shit. a friend of his. What was going on? I didn't even know him. Then why are you giving him flowers? <sighs> my mind began to screech louder in my head. What is it? Why? Why? Diana, why are you giving him flowers? You don't need to know. I highly doubt you knew this man. Yes, I do. Diana stared wide-eyed at me, a mixture of fear and surprise mixed in her eyes. My heart began to squeeze tightly in my chest. Why was she looking at me like that? How do you know him? Answer my question. How? I said, answer my question. I couldn't hold it in my voice. I needed to hear her answer, and I didn't want to hear anything else. Anything other than her answer would infuriate me. Diana looked to the grave, letting out a small sigh. I, my heart tightened further. Answer me. I needed the answer. This man helped the boys come to the human world. He opened a bridge and let them through, before sealing it with a part of his life force. There was more. I knew there was more. I remained silent as she took a breath. I had come to visit their castle one day, and when they told me that the boys were gone, I became frantic. Without the contract marriage, the demon lord would have had the freedom to march on my kingdom and conquer it. I couldn't let that happen. So I tried to find a way here. I searched the castle during my brief visit, trying to find out where the boys went. I found it. This man left behind a small trace of a spell, small enough to be undetected by the inhabitants of the castle. Diana looked at me. 
A look of pain on her face that made my already pained heart feel like it was being punctured by needles. Demon magic is best with consent, but takes more energy when forced. So, in a blind need, I recast the spell and used that man's life force to open the bridge once more and seal it completely when I walked through. I didn't know I was taking the rest of his life. She... By the time the bridge closed, the man had already passed. He was visiting someone in a nearby hospital, so when I left to find the boys, the staff had found him and tried to revive him. I didn't want to take his life. I thought he was a younger man. I didn't know he was as old as he was. She... It's my fault this man is dead. But I needed to come to the human world, and he was my only chance to get close enough to track the boys down. You... Diana tensed up and stared at me. Her face was painted with regret and sadness, something not like her usual self. You killed my grandfather. Your... your grandfather? Run. I needed to leave. I needed to go. I quickly turned and ran, hearing Diana call out for me from behind. Wait! I ran. I didn't look back. I couldn't look back. She started all of this. She was the one who turned my world upside down. She was the reason for this chaos I was in. She took my grandfather away. I ran through the gates of the cemetery and through the streets to my house. This time the world was in slow motion, and I was the one going in fast forward. I didn't care what was going on around me. I just needed to run. My heart began to freeze in my chest, pained by the feeling of needles and knives piercing through it. Tears were running down my face, but I knew where I was running. I ran through the front gates of my house and sprinted inside. I zipped up the stairs and ran into my room. As I slammed the door behind me, I began to weep violently. I leaned against the door and slid to the ground, crying. My world was crumbling, and I didn't like it. My world was broken apart, and I didn't want it. All I could do, though, was cry. My heart denied me from thinking about anything else. I cried. I continued to cry. I let my heart empty all of its pain with each tear that ran down my cheeks. I'm I'm fucking blocking you. (laughs) My scream echoed through my room, bouncing around and reverberating into my ears. I didn't care if it hurt to hear it. I didn't care about anything anymore. All I cared about was crying. I curled into a ball and cried. I didn't even know when I passed out. I didn't remember closing my eyes and letting darkness take me. The darkness was comforting. I felt my sadness numb within it. There was no reality in that darkness to haunt me or hurt me. I wanted to stay within it forever. However... My body forced me to my eyes. I saw the room focus around me and realized I was staring at the ceiling. I was in my bed under my covers. I sat up and looked around, stopping to see Diana leaning against the balcony window looking away from me. Why was she here? Did she carry me to bed? I felt my anger wanting to speak out against Diana, but I noticed the puffiness around her visible eye. Had she been crying? Seeing her bloodshot, puffy eye made me fully aware of my own eyes and how dried they had become after crying. I rubbed my eyes and let out a shaky sigh. I'm sorry. I stared at Diana. My heart didn't want to hear it, but I let her speak. I didn't want to come here in the first place. I only thought of bringing the boys back to protect my kingdom, so everything else became secondary. I didn't mean to take his life. But you did. I did. I can't ask for forgiveness. But I still am sorry. If I could turn back time, I would find another way. I... You know, it's because of you that I met the boys. Huh? I looked my blanket-covered lap. I remembered the funeral, the moving, the meeting with the boys. Everything came at me at once, and now I had the one puzzle piece that fit it all together. If my grandfather hadn't died, 
he'd still be living here, and he'd be the one taking care of the boys instead of me. But he died and gave me his estate, so I came and met them for the first time. I looked to Diana, seeing her sad face. I could tell she really regretted her choice and she was upset. I couldn't sense any deception in her. I guess I have to thank you for introducing me to them and to magic, since my grandfather couldn't do it himself anyway. Diana looked down, pressing her lips together and closing her eyes. I... I need to take your memories now. A deal's a deal. I fulfilled my part and told you everything. I had nothing left to tell you, and you can't keep those memories. I didn't speak. I watched as Diana argued into the air about taking my memories. It felt like she was now doubting the deal, not wanting to take away the truth from me. Did I want her to? This was my chance to return to ignorance. I'd never remember that she took my grandfather's life. I'd never remember everything she showed me and taught me. I'd return to normalcy. Don't. Don't? Don't. Don't. Diana stared at me, a look of almost despair on her face. I, however, kept my eyes to her. You took away my grandfather. What gives you the right to take my memories away? But I... I'm not done speaking. Diana shut her mouth, listening obediently. I needed to speak my mind. She had no right to take anything away. I knew the truth now, and that was all that mattered to me. Screw the rules. I deserve to remember everything. I was thrown into this mess because of you. No one has the right to take anything away from me. Diana took a step towards me, and I was ready to snap at her. However... She gently leaned over me and ran a hand, a hand over my head. All right. What? I won't take your memories. Uh, what, uh, what? I stared up at her in shock. Was she serious? Diana smiled at me and stood back up. You're right. You deserve to know everything. It's the least I can do. Yay! Yay! I felt almost joyful. She agreed. I still didn't forgive Diana, but it was better to know than to be left in ignorance. Eventually, I would be able to move on. Until then, Diana was willing to stay and teach me the life my grandfather knew in redemption. It was something. Head back to sleep and I'll teach you more in the morning. I'll stay a few more days until you know everything. Something felt off, but I nodded, feeling exhaustion drift over me again. Was it natural? I didn't know. My head began to spin and I needed more rest. Diana gently laid me back down and moved hair from my face. Rest. As if from a spell, I closed my eyes and fell back into an unconscious darkness. My heart was healing and it would take time to heal. Thankfully, it had time now to heal and to grow stronger. Diana obeyed my word and stayed with me. She owed me so much already and stayed with me for a good week. Within that time frame, she not only taught me everything she could but she also assisted me in learning some of my own hidden magic. I could barely believe it. I had demon magic floating through my veins, and I could use it at any time. If I had learned how to use my powers earlier, I would have been as strong as a demon. Diana explained that humans who learn of demon magic attract demon energy, and have the potential to use some of it just like demons, but their full power can only be unlocked in the demon world. Being that my grandfather spent almost his entire life learning about demon magic, his energy carried through my father, then to me. Well, Dad clearly did nothing with it. When my dad left my grandfather, his energy diminished. But when I came to the home, mine began to grow. According to Diana, I shouldn't have as much energy as I have. I guess I was lucky. Everything was fascinating. I felt waves of excitement and energy run through my body. I was aware of the energy I held and the magic around me. I could even sense Diana's energy, as powerful as it was. One night, however, as I slept, Diana began to waver. What am I doing? What are you doing? Me? 
High five, bitch! I heard Diana mutter, waking me from my sleep. I opened my eyes and peeked over my covers to see Diana looking out my window. She looked tired and restless. I need to get the boys and return home. My kingdom is in danger. <sighs> Maybe I should call an angel. Ha! My heart froze. She could call an angel. It would baptize me and make me forget everything. I panicked, but I heard Diana sigh. But she... she makes sense. Why should I marry to protect my kingdom? I should be able to... well, would I? Ugh. Me against the demon lord's entire army. I'm not that strong. I slowly sat up, looking to Diana still. She seemed to only focus her attention out of the window, unfazed at my rousing. She's strong, though. The magic in her veins would win me this war. Ugh, but I can't take her magic. I care for her too much. Hey! But she's just a human. I, but... Diana sighed and opened the window. I need to leave. I have to fight him on my own. I'll use the rest of my energy to get back and hopefully recover when I get there. I hope he hasn't already attacked or is ready for me. Yeah? Huh? Am I here? Yep. Okay. Diana stepped out of the window and stood on the balcony. Was she really going to leave? What about me? Was she going to leave? What about teaching me everything? My curiosity was peaking again, and I needed her here. I quickly rushed out of bed and ran to the balcony. Wait! 